guess it's about time someone wrote a song about the natchez I feel it in my bone I could find take this money from under the mattress crawl in a bed Stoking fires, changing channels, I more than paid my penance. And I've done time, baby, overnight, I overstayed. tooth gems and body piercings at Good Cat Tattoos. So your service includes your jewelry, which is titanium, and it's either internally threaded or threadless. You get your choice of gem end. Uh, I've got several colors to choose from, and that's all included in your initial piercing price. Okay. The most Perfect. common, definitely one side. I like to call it the selfie side. Uh, whichever side you commonly take selfies on or hug against. Um, I would say double nostril is my next common. I'm pretty good and precise at lining those up. I use the digital caliper so I'm a little OCD when it comes to it. I won't do it unless I'm comfortable. So uh, the confidence boost that people get from piercing is I have personally seen amazing. They come back in here when they're healed looking for like that special piece of jewelry for them and when we switch that out 
that confidence boost is what I really look for. The initial one is amazing, but you have to kind of grow into that piercing sometimes. You're not really sure, um, but definitely a confidence booster. Uh, so my room is basically uh, my soul, if you will. I feel like I have a very old soul. I collect little oddities and things. A lot of it's from my mom's travels overseas. Uh, in the military, uh, thrift stores, flea markets, found things that are cool. Um, feel free to gift me things. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's comforting. I have my froggy friends and they are a big help to relax clients for sure. So my new jewelry line that I'm working with um, exclusively is Invictus Body Jewelry. They are absolutely amazing, affordable quality titanium. They have gold options. Uh, my case will be very full with those. Um, I work with Diablo Organics for uh, gauges or plugs. Um, the type that I have here is stone. They're double flared. I have all sorts of sizes from the little stretch all the way up to the big guys at three quarters of an inch. I want to uh, just to become more popular straight up. <laughs> uh, they're super fun. That's what you see on my teeth. Um, they're applied the same way as braces with the same adhesive, the same curing light. So you take care of them the same way. Um, if you drink a lot of coffee, they might stain. The more acidic your diet is, they might not last. Um, if you're a big vapor, they might not last as long. But typically for gems, you'll get four to eight months. Gold can be a lot longer. I've had girls who've had both gems and gold on for over a year. So um, it's well worth the investment for sure. The gold is. You yeah. can book an appointment for multiple services, including piercings, jewelry changes, consultations. Um, if you're more of like a walk-in kind of person, just give me a call beforehand. Make sure I'm here. Sometimes I step out for lunch. Um, but I'm happy to help on a walk-in basis too. I understand piercings can be more of like a spree of the moment thing. For tooth gems, appointments preferably, you can't eat for at least an hour after you get your application. So, um, social media, I'm way more active on Instagram. Every once in a while I'll check my Facebook. Um, I have them linked so they post together. However, if you really need to get in contact with me, Instagram is the way to go or call the shop.
Grab your halo, don't give mine And crucify yourself for this life And pull your cross up next to mine Um, like back like the first band I was in um, I met Jason Earhart by chance and orientation at JD and uh, he was a guitar player I was a guitar player and then uh, he's the one who got me going to the Little House yeah. back in the early 90s so I think it was like 93 and um, they needed a second guitar player for their band which was Mother Bear which was Leo Boyle, John Myers Jason Robbins on drums, little Jason drummer boy who's like 15, and then me and Jason. Um, we did that for a few months and then that kind of fell apart and then No Matter came about, which is me, Jason, and Lee. And uh, yeah, we played like the little house. We were like the house band there for for a couple years. Um, that's kind of how it all started. How, it, how was, um, explain to people that never experienced, because that was a very- what the little house was? Explain the little house. Just kind of explain like the 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 it, how it was. Yeah. So Lee's dad or his whole family lived there, uh, but they had an old trailer that they didn't live in anymore. But I guess never moved it off, so it was used as storage or tools or whatever. And Lee started practicing in there, I guess first, and then uh, the idea to come like get bands to play, and then. I came into it, it had already been going a little bit, but I, I remember my first show was the Ne'er-Do-Wells and scooby Dumps, And the guys from the Ne'er-Do-Wells were giving haircuts, like, outside. Like, it was that kind of crazy thing. It was just, 
kids were showing up like 14 to 19, 20 years old. And it was, it was insane. It was nuts. I'd never seen anything like it. And it was like, oh, oh shit. Like that's my people, you know? How important was that environment for you as a young person to have a community of like-minded people? I mean, they might have been a little weird, might have been a little bit different, but to be able to um, hang out with people that just wanted to hang out, to hang, you know, see music and see the experience, talk about a little bit of that. Yeah, because, uh, like, I, I grew up on different music, like my dad liked country, I liked, I, I found, like, hair metal in the 80s and I loved that but then finding like Husker Du and the Pixies were like my first real introduction into like kind of the alternative side of things and then Chili Peppers and like you know you get in that but then to find punk rock was like whoa like what is this <clears throat> and so that that community they're like I don't know it just was so supportive like it didn't matter what you were doing it didn't matter if you were good at it or bad at it or like everybody they, they would show up you know and so like you had a group of people that always just kind of supported what you were doing um and there was kind of a core group of us if you talk about like john and paul and me and jason and jesse <clears throat> kind of switched bands a lot and there were there were multiple bands that were going on and we always had something going on and there were dogs there too it was great the fuck are they doing? <laughs> Y'all stop! Okay. So yeah, but, but being young and then having um, like this idea of what music is for you and then having somebody to help you get it out, like that was huge. Like, I mean, me and Jason are still like this, you know, 30 years later and like the time we spent in a band for two years, like 30 years ago is... Like, it was instrumental in forming, like, not just musical relationships, but, like, the, the core group of friends that I still have now. Like, you know. So, you know, playing in original bands, like, in graduating from the Little House into, like, places like Kirk's with Winterset and, um, and then The Bind after that, you know. Uh, after, like, kind of the original bands went away, I played in cover bands for a long time. But still, at the same time, was still writing music. Um, I always, when I write music, I always hear the full band. Like, I don't know if it's a common thing for songwriters. I, 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 I always hear it. Like, I, I walk around every day with a soundtrack in my head of my own music. Like, I don't hear, like, I'm not singing a Green Day song. Like, it's something of my own, like, being, so then, I, you know, getting home and trying to find that is, um, but I hear the drums, the bass, the, everything, and... Uh, sometimes you can't, sometimes I don't have the people around to get it all out, but so I'll play it anyway. Um, but you can usually tell when you hear me playing that, oh, that song should probably have a band behind it. Do you feel like music's very therapeutic for you still? Like you started it as a, you know, younger person in your late teens yeah. with music. Um, like it's always kind of been there for you, for your therapy. Like if you're upset, you'll go to your guitar or yep. talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so my guitar usually sits like right against the couch or against the wall next to the couch. And I, it doesn't matter what kind of day I had, like it's there. I've, if, even if I'm on a day off, I'll just pick it up, just piddle around. And maybe it's not anything worth any, you know, there's no... There's no songwriting going on. It's just whatever. But just like that act just like kind of helps, you know. I guess it's like the same thing that people, you know, different substances to help like calm their stuff. You know, that's that's a thing that just kind of helps center me. I know. It's scary. Do you have a music page? Uh, no, I don't have anything. Like I, I have like a... <laughs> Oh man, like I got, I, I'm kind of lazy with it. Uh, You're a honestly. 90s kid. Yeah. It's, We're, we suck. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that was a good thing about being in a band with Paul. Like he was very big about that stuff. Like, oh no, we gotta, we gotta keep this going. We gotta record something. We gotta, you know, he had flyers, t-shirts, like you gotta promote like as much as possible. Me, I'm just, uh. You know, uh, I need to do better, I guess, because it's just, you know, how, how are you going to get 
shows or anything if nobody knows that you're doing shows. But um, uh, I would love to take what I do and put a band around it. Um, sometimes it's just logistically hard being in. Uh, I work in casino, food, and beverage, and that kind of dictates my life a lot of times. So, you know, I, I would love to do something further, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Man. I, just, I just like to play. Like, I don't know. Like, I I don't take it. I don't take myself or anything that I do too seriously. Like, that's. I I try not to have an ego about my songwriting. Like, it's my songs. I'm my harshest critic. Like most songwriters probably are. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think my lyrics are like not good enough. But whatever. That's on me. That's not on anybody else. But um, but I I don't take it. And maybe that's why I don't have a Facebook page because, like, the ego part of it, like, I don't, I don't like. That's very or something normal like, in the punk rock world. Yeah, like yeah. you really don't like you shouldn't have an ego, but it's not an ego. No, it's not an ego. It's just, it's just like it's you know like yeah. underground. I know, find I know. me. I know. It's, it's just like, it's a hard thing for me. Yeah. Um, like one thing that's funny is that you know I'm a guitar player. Yeah. Um, but um, recently I joined a band. Uh, if I could mention that. Yes. Okay. Stonecutter. Yes. That's uh, Bobby Egeter and Leo Boyle. So we got back together. They were looking for a bass player. So this is the, actually the third band I'm playing bass in, mm -hmm. which I think actually makes me a bass player now. Yeah, I think, I think. so. That's sweet. So um, that's like a... It's hard to describe that music. Um, Bobby's got a, like a whole different writing style of anybody I've played with. Um, it's... it's ah, If you know bands like... So you... I name bands, but it won't sound like it, but it's where he draws his influence from, like bands like Elder and stuff like that, that, um, Old school. like some, some almost like doom rock kind of stuff, but not really, but then Lee adds a different style with his drawing, and then I add something different with my bass playing, and it's just, yeah, we're really excited about that. We played one show, but we're looking to, you know... Get back more. to do, yeah. We really need to do more music, yeah. Because, like, when we were like 20, everybody was at every show because nobody had anything going on. You worked a minimum wage job somewhere at the mall, mm -hmm. and so everybody just showed up. You can get it off, you can just not go to work, whatever. But now we're you know 30 years later. I mean, I'll be 50 this year. Um, you know, we have responsibility, we have careers, we have children, we have a, like. You know, she, my kids are all grown up, but like they, it's still like something that you have to worry about. Uh, so to find the time to go do this, and then to do it coinciding with the people that used to do it with you, like that's like so rare. Man, it feels good. Like it's, good. yeah, it feels like good. it's people that appreciate what you do, and yeah. it's like you you appreciate what they do. Like the other night uh, when Jason Sanford yeah. shows up, love that guy. And then he's got a new project. It's like, oh man, that's great. Like it just felt good, you know, to to kind of share with people. Those moments. Yeah, yeah. That time. Yeah. Because that's what it's about. Like they're just experiences together. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I think I'm alright. Cool. So my name is Vicki Miller. I am the deacon here at St. Mark's Episcopal Church and the director of St. Mark's Community Arts Center. Um, I got started with this program uh, while I was teaching at Coast Episcopal School in Long Beach. And um, the preschool was about to reopen and I found myself saying, you know, if I didn't work at Coast Episcopal, I think I'd like that job at the preschool. And the, the minute I said that, I went, what am I talking about? I don't know anything about preschools. <laughs> but we did. We opened the preschool, and I found that it was a, a joyful place to be here. And time passed, and we realized that we didn't need a preschool, or Gulfport didn't need a preschool, because all the preschools had moved into the public school system. And so we revisioned this entire building as a community arts center. And that's how I got started with the program. The creative camps we have with the Gulfport School District intercessions and anytime the local schools, private and public, have 
a holiday break or a, an extended period of time in which they're not in school. And so we have these creative camps and each one of them has a different theme. So we're, we have things like down on the farm where we, we will bring in real animals for the children to play with, to draw, uh, learn how to milk a cow and, and that sort of thing. Or we might have a fishing camp where they'll learn how to throw a cast net or um, just how to fish, how to bait a hook, how to dig for worms, that's my favorite. So um, each camp is different. Now those camps are, have tuition and those camps help pay for our, for our outreach camps. The Kids Connect program is not only art and play and sportsmanship and games, we also take them on field trips. So they've been to places like Traintastic, um, the, the aquarium, places that normally they may not get that opportunity to visit. And so within the center, they experience things like uh, art techniques, um, process art. We never have crafts. It's more of a where we give them the tools and they get to discover their own projects. Um, and I've had, I've had some children think that they're coming here to do a study hall. And when we tell them, no, you're here to have fun, they are absolutely amazed with that. And it's so much fun to watch. I had one child who actually was pouring glue one day. And he was planning on putting glitter all over it. And he looked at me and he said, my mother would never let me do this at home. <laughs> and so those are the kind of experiences I want these children to have. Almost all of our materials are recycled materials. We use things like cardboard tubes from toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls. Um, we use slightly loved acrylic paints that somebody says they bought and they no longer use, and so we use them. We use things from nature. We'll have a scavenger hunt outside in our playground and they will pick up pine cones and leaves and use them to draw and paint and create things. Um, so we're not only giving them that experience, but we're also doing things for the environment as well. And I think that's really important. This is a community project. And um, what the community gives to us we give back as well. And so um, I think that doing this, this is we're hardwired to be creative. And God created us in His image. And He, he is delighted whenever we use our, our own creativity. And that's what we want to give that opportunity to, the, to children, to use that creativity and discover their talents they didn't even know they had. And, and to just stand back and watch them grow. It's an amazing thing to watch. On Wednesday mornings, we invite children from ages zero to three, before they start preschool, to come with their mothers and their grandmothers and their grandfathers and come here and play. And they experience the same thing that our older children play with. Um, they have balls uh, to play with, they can play with the puppets, they build things, they uh, play with the trucks and the cars and use their imaginations and you should see some of the things that they come up with. They get to paint, uh, they get to get their hands messy in shaving cream and um, ooey gooey stuff, they love that. Anything that's ooey gooey they're really into. <laughs> but um, it also it gives the mommies the opportunity to network with each other and you can hear them exchanging ideas, uh, names of pediatricians, what's the latest trend in clothes and food and medicine and so it not only uh, gives the children an opportunity to explore and to play but it gives them mothers uh, a time to make friends and, and they do, they're from all over the community so they make friends with each other. Well, as a deacon, I'm out in the community That's and in, in bringing the needs of the community in, uh, to the church. And while I'm out, I also ask, uh, inquire about 
what would you be interested in as an adult? Would you be interested in art classes or music classes? And what I discovered is there is a need for art classes um, and a desire. And so we have classes that are just for teens. Uh, we have classes for adults. We have a group from the De La Paix Deaf Center, and this is folks from the deaf community. And we do have an interpreter. And uh, my, my American Sign Language is enough to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so we do have an interpreter that um, will help me instruct them, uh, show them uh, the different tools that they need to paint and create. Um, we also have private classes. Uh, with 10 people or more, you can schedule a private class and we will teach you whatever it is that you're interested in. Uh, we had a group come in and use it as a fundraiser for their particular group and uh, it was glass painting. So we're going to have another private class on jelly printing. Jelly printing. And I know that sounds very odd to some folks, but it's not painting with jelly. Um, you just have to see it and be part of it. Jelly printing with a G. Oh my goodness. Um, coming up with ideas uh, is usually sparked by um, things that I see in the community or I've had suggestions from people in the community or I just know a lot of teachers and believe me I talk to teachers all the time and they and they would say things like I wish we could do and when they say I wish we could do I take that idea and I run with it because we can we can do that and um, so ideas usually come from my little brain somewhere in the recesses of my brain <laughs> and um, I, I don't know I'll just see something and go that would make a great camp that's a great idea let's do that so um, yeah it's yeah I, I guess God gave me that gift of creativity and I use it every chance I get um, I often tell people that um, I'm sort of go with Irma Bombeck said once uh, I hope that at the end of my life I use up every talent that God gave me and so that's kind of what I do here so I just use my own talents and creativity the award we were honored to be chosen um, by the Gulfport School District and recognized for our Kids Connect program um, and we were awarded Community Partner of the Year for that and of which I, I've got to say, it's our volunteers. Uh, we cannot do the Kids Connect program without the help of our volunteers. And they come from the St. Mark's community, our, our family. Um, and they're more than happy. And they tell me that they get an awful lot out of it, probably more than the children do. The children don't know that. <laughs> but um, it was an honor to be recognized by the Gulfport School District. Down the road, we're really looking to bring the community in in other ways. We're looking to add um, piano lessons by somebody in the community that wants to teach piano. We have the space. Um, and we want to have guest speakers and guest artists and uh, entertainers to, um, to teach what they do. Um, that's what this place is all about. It's a community center and so, yeah, that, and we want to host birthday parties. And um, I know that was one program that I'm working on currently, right now, uh, a place for um, dance classes. So um, it's not just us putting on different things. We want, we invite the community to come in and, and they will share their talents and share their creativity with the community. All right, the songwriter.
pages from words, expressions never heard, and they know. Lost in space, I lose my place. They float away. Fingers on. Falling on the sword, I'll cut my heart out in song every night. I live and die by these words locked in my mind.